let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about heating your greenhouse, but not just the normal way with things like electricity, which for small greenhouses is still viable, propane and natural gas or wood. These are the standard ways to heat your greenhouse. Today, we're going to talk about alternative ways to heat your greenhouse. And this is where it gets interesting. So stay tuned and let's explore something new and different. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You can check out if you actually hit that subscribe button. But what's interesting is you can actually game the YouTube algorithm by hitting the like button. Because when you tell YouTube that you like something, YouTube then serves you up other similar videos on the same topic, even from different creators. So hit like, hit subscribe, and you're going to get more of what you like. So the first thing we're going to talk about with alternative greenhouse heating is probably the most simple in-your-face heating that's possible for a greenhouse. And it's passive solar heating. Using what's called a solar greenhouse or a Chinese greenhouse, you insulate the north wall and not only insulate, but a Chinese greenhouse will put clay up to a meter thick in the north wall so it acts as a thermal bank or a thermal battery, collecting heat during the day that it can release in the evening to heat your plants. Now, these work well, depending on how they're constructed, of course, down to certain temperature ranges. If you live in an area that's getting 40 below, this may not be the greenhouse for you. But if you're only going down to minus 10, minus 20 Celsius, if built properly, a passive solar greenhouse works well. Now, one of the big buzzes that people go on about is a geothermal heating source. And there's two ways to look at this. There's the standard geothermal heat which depending on where you live, where I live, the ground is, when you get down seven or eight feet, you're looking at about five degrees Celsius. If you go a little further south, it goes up to, you know, eight, 10, 12, 14. The more temperature you have in the ground, the better this is for you. Where I live, you need to actually do a boost if you're gonna get through 40 below. So a geothermal system will boost it. You got five degrees and it amplifies the heat using some electricity to get you back up to 15 or 20, which your plants are going to love. Now, there is a solution, but once again, it's completely dependent on pollen location. Iceland, for example, heats their greenhouses with geothermal heat, but it's geothermal heat from the lava that they're so close to. And they can heat their greenhouses to virtually any temperature they want because of this. One of the options to heat your greenhouse that's starting to become popular is solar thermal. The sun gives off two types of energy that we can collect. It's probably got a bunch more, but there's two primary types right now that we're using solar collectors to benefit from. One is solar photovoltaic, which you see on the rooftops and on your calculator, and the other is solar thermal. And solar thermal collects the heat from the sun, and it's starting to become popular the way it's used is that heat is then pumped into some sort of collection thermal battery, whether it's a big tank of water or similar water type material, or whether it's into an area of the ground that heats it up over a long period of time, i.e. seasonally sometimes over the summer. And you can draw that heat out on demand with a thermostat in the winter to heat your greenhouse. Now, this next option for solar wasn't really economically possible 10, 15 years ago. But because the cost of solar panels has come down so much, instead of using solar thermal, you can actually now use photovoltaic solar collection panels for electricity and store that heat, whether it's with a lithium battery or an earth battery or a big tank of water, to use later to heat your greenhouse on demand with a thermostat. And what's nice about this is photovoltaic cells don't require much maintenance at all. Once they're set up, they just start working. All you gotta do is make sure they stay clean in a snowstorm or that they don't get that dirty and you're gonna have heat if you can get enough of them and be able to store that energy 
this is a viable solution to heat your greenhouse and it's just becoming available right now on the market. Now, when I talk alternative energy and heating, we've already talked about solar thermal and solar photovoltaic, but there's one other real renewable major resource that we haven't tapped into, and that's wind. It's possible to get mid-sized windmills now at affordable prices that can generate electricity almost all day long. Now, I'm not a huge proponent of 100% wind or 100% solar. I believe in hybrid systems. Now, that means that I think you should be looking at probably 60% or 65% solar and 30, 35% wind power that will continue to put energy into your thermal battery or regular battery so that you have energy to heat your greenhouse. And one of the things we found as we go forward is that it's cheaper to generate the energy than it is to store it. So if you have an ability to generate energy during the night and especially during the winter, when we need heat in Northern climates, like where I live around Winnipeg, Manitoba, the sun, you've only got a functional four or five hours of sunlight that you can collect if that, and with solar panels, it's probably two, three hours because of angles and, wind cloud cover storms that kind of thing it's not enough you have to rely massively on an amount of energy that you've stored or have a huge solar array but if you can add a windmill and where i live there's a lot of wind that can slowly add energy during the time when the solar panels aren't working you really got something you don't need as much of a battery to store that energy to heat your greenhouse and the batteries are where the real costs are this method that we're going to explore is called compost heating. And if you've ever raked up a pile of leaves and left it and gone back to it a week or two weeks later and it's been a little bit moist, you're going to find a lot of heat there. So a fella about 30, 40 years ago in France called Jean Pain created a system where you can actually draw heat out of a large compost pile. And he did it by wood chips, a little bit of manure, um, making sure the leaves were also from the trees mixed in there and piling it up high, wetting it down. And he was able to get nine to 15 months of 140 to 150 Fahrenheit heat steady coming out of these large piles. Now, when you think about that level of heat, that level of heat, if you start putting it into your greenhouse, it's absolutely fantastic. You can have radiant floors you can have radiators that pump heat into your place there's all kinds of options to get that heat in and it's 24 7 and the only real problem is at the end of it you've got this great big pile of perfect compost that maybe your greenhouse could use now this next option is for the real farmers and the reason i say that is that it's livestock heating if if you have livestock, whether it's chickens or pigs or rabbits or something of that nature, inside, they give off, their body heat gives off an enormous amount of energy. And that energy can be used to keep your plants above freezing. The other nice thing about it is it doesn't get that hot. I mean, the animals will warm themselves up and keep it above freezing, but you're not looking at 90 degree temperatures in 40 below. So you may have to look at winter crops if you're in a real cold climate like lettuce and spinach and that kind of stuff. But depending on how you design your greenhouse, if it's done properly, you can get decent enough temperatures through the night for tomatoes and cucumbers while you also have chickens and rabbits and pigs and things of that nature that are also not freezing to death. Okay, this last one is for the little greenhouse owners, the guys that have the 100, 200 square foot greenhouse in their backyard. And what it is, is it's simply a candle with a terracotta pot. These work quite well. And the little candles that you can buy are cheap as dirt. They're not very expensive. So this isn't for minus 40 degree weather. This is for the shoulder seasons where you're minus two, minus three. And you need to just keep enough heat in your greenhouse so that nothing freezes. But as an option for a small greenhouse, these work. Well, I hope 
I gave you some ideas on very alternative heating. Rather than just plugging in some propane or natural gas or turning on the electricity, there's a lot of ways you could heat your greenhouse now and keep your plants above freezing or above 10, 12 degrees Celsius, which is a nice temperature because even in minus 30 degree temperature, if you've got full sunlight, your greenhouse is going to heat up just from the sun itself. So the reason we look at most of this alternative heating is either severe cloudy days or nighttime. And the biggest problem we have in northern climates is there's a lot of nighttime. It's not just 12 hours of sunlight, 12 hours of night. But as soon as you start getting into areas like Winnipeg and Canada, nighttime is two thirds or more of your day. And that's a lot of heating to do. So let's try and contain it and keep it as cheap as possible.